burst pipe at 3 a.m. is a bad way to start the day. A cold shower in November isn't invigorating. So before you start freaking, call Beacon. Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical is just one call away 24 hours a day. 1-800-FREAKIN or beaconplumbing.net. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Women are going on Reddit, and they're sharing things that guys do that aren't nearly as attractive as those guys think they are. Ooh. <laughs> Number one's got to be the dong pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're close. <laughs> You're close. It's, a, it's, it's actually um, much more broad than that, but uh, it's just nudity in general. <laughs> Male nudity, not that big of a thing for women. Yeah. As it were. I feel <laughs> like if you're able to make it a joke... I think that's funny, and obviously humor is an aphrodisiac, so like there is a weird connection to it, but if you're like, hey, I'm naked, right? are you turned on? It's like, not necessarily, but if you put a top hat on that, I'm going to laugh. Right, like I don't know if there's like a proper pose, unless like you're like completely ripped, then maybe that's, but more often than not, we aren't. Um, right. So for me, it would just be like, I, like the other day, I walked into the bathroom, and my wife was getting ready, and I just hiked up my boxers, so like there was like, they looked like Speedos. And just like way up over my waistline as well. I'm like, how are you doing? And of course it wasn't like, oh my gosh, take a picture of that. I need to save this. It was just more like. it's like, like, have me now. Right. It was more like, oh, that's funny. (laughs) (laughs) Can you please stop that though? (laughs) Thank you for that image. Yeah, totally. I burned my eyes. Yeah, I don't don't really. And they were like these fluorescent green Under Armour underwear. And oh, that image great. is getting clearer and clearer. Wow, you yeah, can thanks, green Steve. screen that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, she thought I looked like Borat. <laughs> okay. All right, Again, then. This is not a good image. Fair. Uh, yeah, don't don't like that. Yeah, so, yeah, anything at all related to male nudity. Pictures of male nudity, male nudity in person, all male nudity. Women on Reddit are going, yeah, we don't dig it. It's not attractive now and forever. Which is the exact opposite for men. I don't, you know, you don't have to be ripped. You don't have to be in great shape for me to go, wow, there's a woman naked. All right, I'll go check that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, you know, it is just so amazing how, how completely different we are, you know, on average. I think the female body just, it, in general, looks nicer. Yes, it I does. Mean, I think even women agree, like, they'd rather see a naked woman than, even if they're not into women, they'd still rather see a naked female body because it's way, it's way more beautiful than, you know, Lumps McGee over here. Sorry for all of this. <laughs> Lumps McGee. Oh, yeah, yeah. McGee. I'm sorry, but I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Lumps McGee. <laughs> Lumps McGee. Yeah. That's my backyard wrestling name. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about the, li- the women on Reddit with the list of the things that guys do that are not nearly as attractive as what those guys think they are. And, of course, nudity is number one. Vicky, what do you, you got? Uh, we, t- we took nudity off the tab- table. Anything else that guys do that they think, oh, this is making me, this is making me look great. And you're like, no. When they talk crap about anybody else to make them look better or they think it's a compliment, like when Number they two talk on crap the list, about other dudes, like, oh, that guy is, such a, is so weak or whatever, that girl's not as pretty as you or whatever. It's just like, I didn't ask. Right. Like, that's a weird thing to bring up. Like, if, if I'm asking, is that girl prettier than me, then I have my own problems and that's a red flag. But It's like a jealousy thing, I think. Yeah. It boils down to like, you just can't be okay with someone else like looking good for a reason, whatever reason that might be. It's like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with other women looking attractive. Like, you don't have to compare me to them. Like me for me, I guess. It's a weird concept. Yeah, it's it. You know, I I I think that it's again, it is a dude thing, and this to me goes back to like tribal caveman stuff because we're in competition, 
And of course, if you're trying to win the affections, if you will, of, of, of your mate, then you want to show that you are the best. You know, I, I, I'm better than him, so don't evaluate him. And then you're also telling her, and you're the best I can get. You're the best I want. There's nobody else. I, I, but you come off as a dork when you do it. Right. Oh, Actions yeah. speak oh, louder yeah. than words. I don't need you to tell me I'm the best or that you're the best. I need you to prove that you're the best by being the best version of yourself. Hence why I hike up my Under Armour yeah. underwear. Because <laughs> that is the best version of Steve. Thank you. I, you know, first of all, Vicky, it's a lot easier just to say I'm amazing than I actually have to work on being amazing. Okay, and that's a lot of hard work. Just know I'm just that gonna, we, when you say yeah. you're amazing, no one believes it. Yeah, I'm hoping that somebody will. Um, but that I, it's very, very much like you know, it's dudes. Just I get like if you know, for me as a dude, I understand that kind of thinking. But yeah, women are just like, what? What are you doing? You know, you're 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 putting somebody down in order to make yourself look good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, number three on the list. Uh, this one, I don't know. This could go, uh, either way, but it's definitely talking about guys, um, calling your exes crazy, which, yeah, that's I never good. I don't want to talk about my exes. Like, yeah. I just, I have zero interest in, like, even having that conversation. It's what's, when the past is in the past, unless they ask a question point blank mm-hmm. about something like, hey, why did that relationship end? Then, okay, I'll tell them, but I'm not, I'm still not going to crap all over that person. I feel like if a guy brings it up first, it's to prove, like, I'm not hung up over my exes. They're crazy. Mm-hmm. But See, if, but- if I do has multiple crazy exes, then I don't think they were the crazy ones. I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like this goes both ways though, because I've been on a date before when the girl just every everything that she says is just about her ex. Oh, yeah. I'm just like you know, I'm out. Like yeah, well, you have to be. I've had that conversation with someone. I'm like, why don't you want to hang out again? I'm like, it doesn't sound like you're over whoever it was that you were with before, because the entire conversation was about that person, and it's just like, why? Why? I'm not here to be your therapist for your ex boyfriend. Like, I just don't care. And I find like eight to nine times out of ten when a guy says, or even a girl says that their ex is crazy, it's because they put up healthy boundaries or they reacted appropriately to something bad they did. Like, oh, well, she freaked out because I cheated on her, so she was the crazy one because she got really mad and yelled at me. It's like, no, she reacted appropriately. You're just, you know, trying to find an excuse to kind of belittle that uh, reaction. Either way, uh, women are saying, if you call your ex crazy, we ain't digging it. Mm -hmm. We ain't digging it. And this is a list of uh, what women have put on Reddit saying uh, when guys think this is the right thing to do to make themselves look good, but in reality, it's not. Uh, I, had, like, I remember a, a while back, I had a bud that hit me up. He was like, hey, I was thinking about hanging out with this person, but I know you dated them once. And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't care. Like, thank you for checking, but like, I don't care. Like, it's, it's been X, like a 10 plus years since that person's been in my life. And I'm obviously in a situation where I'm not like pining for that person. But thanks for checking. But that's totally fine. Like, well, I was just also wondering, like, is she kind of, is she nuts or this? You know, asking those kind of questions. I'm like, dude, like, no, it's fine. And I remember my, my wife even asked me, like, hey, so was that? I'm like, oh, no, the person was completely nuts. She's like, well, why didn't you tell that to your buddy? I'm like, well, it, we're not that close. And also, and that's not fair to that person. That was like over 15 something years ago. Like, yeah. times have changed. Like, for all I know, when I was dating that person, they were in like a weird spot. But I mean, it's not, uh, let him figure that out on his own. You know, like she was like crazy to the point where it was, there was never like I was waking up and like she was hovering over my bed with a machete. Right. Like that wasn't that crazy. It was just more like, oh, there was jealousy issues or something like that. But that people mature over time and it's not fair to lump them into that category from what they were 15 years ago. Yeah. Which to me, you know, it, that is the, the, the and that question you were asked, Steve, is the ultimate dude thing trying to control. Like, all right, I want to get all my ducks in a row. Let mm-hmm. me do this, this and this. And you're talking about another living being. This isn't like a, a, a piece of tech or a vehicle. You, there's no way that you can manage somebody's personality. You're just going to have to know that, hey, guess what? You're going to be attracted to somebody, and they're going to act differently than you act, and that's going to be chaotic for you. In but my you head, can manage that chaotic thing, if, especially if that person's awesome. And there's a very good chance that me 15, 20 years ago was the reason why she was acting, quote unquote, crazy, because I was maybe driving her crazy. I don't know. I didn't want to bring that up in front of you, Steve. You know what I mean, though? It's like there's a lot of factors. Like, I was like, I, you should probably figure that out, that part on your own. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty big of you to actually not hold that kind of a grudge and, and realize that 10 years is a long time. Yeah. You know, people can change in 10 years. I mean, people still judge me, and rightly so, based on their interactions that they had with me 10, 15 years ago, and I haven't talked to them since. So their impression is still that impression of me 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And I've come to peace with the fact that, well, I can't blame them because 10, 15 years ago, I was what I was. But judging me that way now is kind of like unfair because it's like, 
well, it doesn't matter how much work I do in myself. You're never going to give me credit for that because you're still seeing me that long ago. But it's not fair. I, I mean, it's crazy to think that someone would not change in the course of 10 years. And yeah, anyway. it, could go, it could go either way. I've seen some people go down like it's I don't know if you've had this, but man, it's not nothing saddens me more than a friend who I thought was really an amazing human being. And uh, there's one friend in particular that I have that has gone off the rails. And I thought, this person was the nicest person. Like, no matter how much of a miserable SOB I was, they were kind. They did great things for my family. They were amazing. And so my brain just thought, they're only going to get better, right? There's no way they're going to become like a worse human being. They're just going to always have this big heart and be open to life and my gosh, they are one of the biggest people you'll see on the internet spewing hate. And I'm like, what happened? Well, I mean, like, like this was not the, the person The internet I happened. Social yeah. media happened. It gets in your brain. Yeah. It just so deteriorates s- your brain quickly. So sad. Because, I mean, this person, I thought, wow, I mean, what an amazing human being. And now I'm like, hey. This segment you know? brought to you by Twitter. Yeah. Making people happy yeah. since 2010. You're right, dude. So I was curious. I don't know if you, uh, if Sarah has, maybe we could call her in because people were wondering about like what it is about her that would turn her off from a guy like when, when they think something's cool. Cause that, that would be a probably a pretty interesting one to get Sarah's feedback on this. Yeah. Cause I mean, Sarah is, likes people in prison. So I'm not, I'm really not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what would turn her off in a guy that they, you know, like a guy trying to impress her. And she's like, yeah, that's not impressive. Oh, Sarah. A guy that spends more time on his look and appearance than I do is a huge turnoff for me. Uh, who, that's number six on the list. Who spends more time getting ready than I do. I don't think we've ever timed it, but do I get take longer than getting ready than oh, you said? I think you do. I, I, oh, yeah. I'm willing to put whatever money's in my wallet right now <laughs> that you oh, take yeah. longer to get ready than Sarah. I Damn. think I do because every time yeah. we're at like a more at, at a uh, radio convention or anything, it's like I have to straighten my hair, put on my eyeliner, put on the cologne, and Sarah's like waiting for us. Oh, it is so true. As, as a matter of fact, I would like to make this point, and I want to be care be, be careful that I'm not being insulting. Because, uh, Danny, your girlfriend's a very, very attractive woman, but she looks like she just goes out looking that way. And you're the one that looks like you take hours putting makeup <laughs> yes. on. It's true. Yeah. She I, doesn't put on makeup. I feel oh, like you probably well, spend more time on your hair you than go. she spends on her hair. Yes. 100%. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I'm, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't uh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, good thing well, we're not dating, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be I, awkward. You would drive me crazy. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, let's go. You don't look that great if you strain your hair and put eyeliner on. You're spending all this time to look disheveled. You just okay. look disheveled. Yeah, that's a conversation I have with a lot of my friends when they're super late to our plans. I'm like, you don't look like a supermodel. What took you so long? Oh, that probably goes over wow. great. Wow, that's my daughter. I have friends. <laughs> how do you, how do you have friends? <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're like 30 minutes to an hour late to something and you don't look a freaking amazing what what have you been spending your time doing or what did they look like before they spent that <laughs> exactly. minutes? exactly or they think they look really well and then i'm like oh sorry sorry to break it to you but, oh mm. man yeah if that was my man oh there's no way there's- i've always had a hard time with this you know and i'm a, i i all i always felt like i'm putting lipstick on a pig whenever i try to make myself look good anyway but what other you know guys loading up on cologne jewelry hair gel i mean i don't know if it was the if if john travolta ruined it for a lot of guys saturday night fevering his way to what he thinks is a good look but i i i've never understood dudes it's like what are you doing why are you taking so long putting all this stuff on oh i'm metrosexual okay whatever well some girls are attracted to it so turns out a lot of them aren't at least according to this reddit thing i mean you know so I, I, you know, you're right, Vicky, because there, there's got to, but then the, the, where are all these women that go, no, I don't really like a guy that does all this. There are people at the gym, I feel like, spend more time getting ready for the gym than I do for like an, an, a date night out. <laughs> it's like insane when I see someone, I'm like, what in the, like, how are your clothes look that perfect? And you're at the gym. Yeah. Steve, one of the things on this like my list stuff is, is all work. wrinkled. I'm like, my gym clothes are like the the crap that I won't wear in public. Like, it's just like, oh, these are like, okay, these shorts are fine. Whatever. I don't care. These I feel socks like have holes in them. Perfect I f- for the gym. I feel like if you're a decent human being and you're not a troll and you're like that, Steve, you look like you're comfortable, probably in a relationship. And I bet that's an attractive thing is just a comfortable dude who's not trying too hard because, well, you're probably already in a re- relationship. And maybe that's the key. Look like you're in a relationship with the way you carry yourself, 
which is normally just you're a comfortable dude. <laughs> Zero F give, F's given kind of mentality. <laughs> well, I mean, there may be something to that, you know, it, it, but you're also a decent human being because you still have to be a decent human being to be in a relationship. Like, she's not going to put up with you if you're a complete a-hole for too long. And great, it was, this is a little bit different, like going to a club. I remember a few years ago when we went to Summer Meltdown. And part of Summer Meltdown, it's a festival at, in Darrington. And, the, and, you know, you spend a lot of time outside and you're having a good time. So, like, you know, you go to the river, you're wearing, like, board shorts and a tank top and flip-flops. But by the end of the night, then everyone, like dolls up in like a festival kind of way typically like crazy costumes bedazzled outfits or glowing things like people go like balls out for their outfits right and the and our crew is cracking up because i just never changed like i just still wearing the same board shorts and the same dirty tank top and a kiss trucker cap dancing in the late night tent while everyone else is like all dolled up and i'm just like i don't care man i'm comfortable you guys look very uncomfortable right now (laughs) I'm wasted and comfortable. You guys are wasted and wearing tight Ooh, clothes. Wasted and comfortable. Now, there's a line of clothing you could start selling, Steve. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's to take nothing for granted. So when you expect hot water and get cold, when you expect the shower to drain and it doesn't, when you turn the furnace on and it won't start, stop freaking and call Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical. 1-800-FREAKIN. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. Everything is better electrified. Like the guitar, toothbrushes, or cars. And Hyundai has the widest range of electrified vehicles on the market, including the first ever Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. You can use electric when you want it or gas when you need it. It's your journey. Evolve it beyond the pump in the 2022 Tucson or Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Visit your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at HyundaiUSA.com. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. <laughs> Ninety-nine point nine KISW, the Rock of Seattle. An Australian woman claims that uh, she woke up from tonsil surgery, sporting an Irish accent, and uh, this is a syndrome. I, I, we have talked about this before. I still can't believe it's real. It's called foreign accent syndrome, and uh, I guess it's very rare. And it usually happens after a brain injury. But she just got tonsil surgery, and uh, here she is talking about her new Irish accent. I woke up with an Irish accent and I've never been to Ireland before (laughs) and I went to the hospital and they couldn't provide any answers. At this stage, I don't think it's going to get better. I feel like she's making it up. You think? It just sounds so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Well, I woke up and I died. It's not going to get any better. Top of the morning to you. But then you have to maintain that for right. the rest of your life. Yeah, you do. Or until it, it, it goes away miraculously. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. It's going to go away. See, I would have to take a brain surgery for me to be able to do an accent right. Because I couldn't fake that. You know what I mean? I would be yeah, like, you couldn't fake I, it. You're absolutely right. I have an Irish I, I accent I woke up with before. Before? Before? You went to like an Irish, an Irish New Yorker. I, that's what it sounds like in my head. I don't know how to do accents, man. Yeah, I, I well, Why? I know what you're, you're good Why? at animal impressions. I'm from Ireland. Yeah. I had tonsils. Yeah, that's, uh, Irish? I mean, if that's a real deal, which they say it is a real deal, it's pretty wild. Well, Vicky, I, can you do an Irish accent? No. <laughs> okay, well, can that's right. I know, I'm trying to, th- like, so you all want to just judge me, but at least I'm willing to put my best foot forward. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Now all I'm hearing is, like, your version of it, and that's all I'm trying, my brain is trying to copy. Well, play like, her a little bit again. Yes. Cleanse the palate. I woke up with an Irish accent, and I've never been to Ireland before. And I went to the hospital, and they couldn't provide any answers. At this stage, I don't think it's going to get better. <laughs> oh, hold on. My, I found out my husband is with his floozy eating McDonald's while I'm making a delicious meal. 
I that's watched more this, English. That's, I, yeah, that's, that's English. That's totally English. English. Yeah. I watched this Irish chick who talks about her ex-husband cheating on her. Oh, I was with like, a floozy. That is a very random thing to do. <laughs> and so I was trying to copy her stories. Gotcha. Yeah. That's all I got. Are, Are you sure she's Irish? This woman that you're here because she sounded yes. English to me. Yes, she's very Irish. All right. Well, you, you're very English. Well, you can do an English accent I at least. I can do that. Maybe we should ask you to do an English accent. You might come out with an Irish one. <laughs> oi. <laughs> oi. I don't know why every accent I do has to start with the oi. 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 Well, oi is, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of times that's how a lot of English folks will say, hey, oi. Oi. What are you doing? Hey, what? What's up? What are you doing? Danny, can you do an Irish accent? I don't, I don't think I can. However, I like to get my Guinness and my bangers and mash. It's better than mine. All right, well, there you I go. I mean, almost as good as mine. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, almost, yeah. Rev. <laughs> oh, God. I'm Irish from Ireland, and I love potatoes. That's good. That's a good one. The potatoes. Not bad. Potatoes. Gonna, potatoes. I love how he's going to say, though, he starts off, I'm Irish from Ireland. I'm Irish. <laughs> Irish. Irish. And I love my potatoes. Oi, I'm from Ireland, too. Oh, really? Which part of Ireland? Oi, Ireland City. Oi, take me down. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Yeah, well, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone. None of us. Gonna, yeah, no one's going to come calling to us for uh, voice acting. I feel like you could do a acting. BJ. It depends. It really depends on my mood. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, oh I, pretty, is that all you can say? <laughs> Are you in a good mood? Well, from I could Ireland. say a little bit more, but you know, it starts to really get a wee bit uh, less effective Ooh, if I keep talking. Bit. A wee yeah. bit. You remind me of Mrs. Doubtfire. It's uh, a that was a good movie. It was. <laughs> so it makes his Irish accent sounds like a pirate Marge Simpson. <laughs> oh, it's kind of true, actually. Okay. Oh, God, At God. some point, we're going to need someone to do a pirate Marge Simpson impression, and you're our guy. Oh, homie. Oi. <laughs> Oi. Oi. I'm Oi. from Oi. Ireland, homie. Oi. Tell yeah. Bart to make us the bangers and mash, homie. Uh, Lassie, you're not from Ireland. And isn't bangers and mash more of an English thing? Probably. Oi, I don't know. I just heard one of you say it, homie. Go on beef and cabbage. Oi. Oh, God. A fine boiled dinner. My mother made it all the time. There you go. That's all I got for you. I mean, yeah. I would like you to tell me a story because you kind of got like the grandpa <laughs> thing going on with that. Like, oh, I'm going to Well, I mean, in general, he story. has the grandpa thing going that's on. That's true. Oh, okay. works well, out. that's lovely. You know what? I knew this would devolve. Oh, I think you're talking about me. I'm like, sit on my lap, Danny. No, what? that's something oh, completely I, different. I got a story oh, for you. Yeah, this is uh, it's like, now no. that's Marge Simpson playing Jigsaw. Yeah, weird. Yeah, weird. <laughs> would you like to play a game, homie? Yeah, that's a. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> Oi. Okay. Someone said if you guys could wake up one day with a different accent, what accent would it be? Well, clearly Irish yeah. for me. <laughs> I oh, would love man. a Scottish accent. Just that super thick accent. And then it yeah. wouldn't be weird if I was walking around in a kilt. But then you would be Shrek. Oh, ne- never mind. No, I don't want that anymore. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this game. I think I want well, to get my yeah, old yeah. New York accent back. Because uh, like, my wife will always try and get me to like, like speak how I used to sound when I was like growing up, and I can't do it. But like, she'll listen to like these old clips of me calling radio stations or videos or whatever, and it's just she just can't stop laughing. Cause Does just, it come back when you go home, Steve? A little bit, but not yeah. to the level of where I think she wants to, like the full bore, you know, thick New York accent to come back. And I'm just like, I don't. Sometimes when I yell, it comes out, but I don't yell very often. And then, and sometimes when I go home or I talk to some of my friends on the phone, it'll, it'll, like little words will pop in and out, but not not to the level I think that she wants. Yeah, I've kind of I can do a Boston accent, but I really have to think about it. I would because sometimes I'll miss some words when I'm trying to do a Boston accent, mm-hmm. and I'll pronounce it, you know, like not the way they pronounce it in Boston. And uh, it's weird. I mean, it's been a long time because I've had to, like, lose that accent, you know, 30, 35 years ago when I started in this business. And for me, uh, I never tried to lose the accent. It just happened in college, like, over over time, just being around people that didn't speak with a thick New York. Because I, I went to college in upstate New York, and as we joked in, New, in the city, we would be like, everyone in upstate New York talks like they're on TV, you know, because it's like there really wasn't much of an accent. Yeah, I in, in a Rochester, which is Western New York. It's not upstate where you right. were, but they, they, you know, the, you're starting to get to the midwestern m- midwestern accent because mm-hmm. in Rochester they go, "We're having a heart attack." I mean, that's their accent in that's Rochester funny. and Buffalo, uh, and that you know. But Cleveland is the place where apparently, at least we were told, Cleveland, Ohio, there's no accent. It's just uh, it's basically American. 
you know, where American. they, yeah, they speak American, if you will. There's no accent at all. It's kind of like the accent you'll see certain British actors do when they're doing an American. Like, all right, let's just do this American accent. And then it's this generic sort of, hi, everybody, welcome to America. And I'm an American accent person. But, you know, we've got lots of accents in our you know, country. Washington's not horrible until you get to until you actually say Washington. Then you go Washington and you go, oh, yeah, there is an accent with certain situations. Ooh, BJ, we got a good text. This is OMG, BJ. Is it weird that I suddenly have a crush on you because of your Irish accent? Aww. It's cute. Ooh, there you go, BJ. Yeah. Well, that's what it took all these years, finally. If I'd had only known all in my entire life trying to get people to be attracted to me, if I only knew it was the accent. Well, why don't we all just, uh, just switch to an Irish accent? We could be like BJ Miggs, two Irish guys on the radio. Yeah, your Irish Oy. accent's very convincing. Oy. It's a great tagline there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. BJ makes two Irish guys in the morning. Yeah, there you go. Totally would crush it in the ratings with that. Oh, Can you just we put, surely like, would. like quotation marks around the Irish at least. <laughs> yeah. We could be riding our turtles wearing like you know like leprechaun hats. Yeah, like, hey. leprechaun hats. Oi. <laughs> with a pot of gold. Yes. I, there was a guy that did that, uh, and all right, I'm not going to mention. Well, I'll say, uh, you know what? I don't care. I mean, it was his name. Oh, was, zero F's yeah. given, BJ. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm from mean, Ireland. You don't care. You're like Conor McGregor. He's, uh, his name was Arthur Crofton, and I used to compete against him in Jacksonville. And Arthur Crofton uh, was on the light rock station, basically, and, uh, you know, like the warm of uh, Jacksonville. Okay. And he would always talk like this. And eventually they were like, this is awesome. He passed himself off, including to management, as a British dude. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't <laughs> until they said, we're going to give away this big trip, Arthur. We're going to take a bunch of people over to England and you're going to be their tour guide. And then he finally had to say, I've never been to England. I don't even know. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, it was. Uh, if you watch a uh, is it Avenue eight? I think of the show with Hugh Laurie. Uh, uh, it's a space show. But he basically also pretended to be a British guy on that show. And it turns out he's not British at all. And uh, it's so uh, art imitating life. Arthur Crofton was not a British dude, and he was always, hello, this is Arthur Crofton, and you're listening to the the warmest warm favorites, and this and that, and uh, have some tea and crumpets. I mean, he did the whole thing, and he was not from England, never been there. How long did he pull that off for? Well, even after they found out, they still let him do it. So that, as far as I know, he might even still be there being Arthur Crofton. <laughs> Oh, but, man. you know, me, I was a bitter guy who was losing to him, so I went on every chance I got on the radio and said, you know, he's not from England, right? You he's know, not he's real. Just, he's not real. I'm tired of it. I kind of did that one time at, when I worked at Hot Topic because there was this uh, guy that came in, and he had a thick English accent, and all the girls that I worked with, they just were swooning over this guy because right. of his accent. It was literally just his accent. So I thought he had left the the – store and i was like at talking to one of my friends and i was like well what is it about the english accent that gets you girls going and i was like what if i just talk like this i'm from england and from the other side of the store he's like oh what part of england are you from mate and i just lost it called me out everyone in the store just laughed at me and i was like yeah i'm not gonna do this anymore <laughs> nice try buddy yeah, yeah. <laughs> go back to your emo ways vicky Bye. says that she found arthur colton yeah. Uh, Crofton, and that he, too. <laughs> he's still doing radio. It says since August 23rd, 1990, almost 30 years, his interest in radio began as a child growing up in his native no! England, oh! listening to the BBC. Oh, is he still lying? That's what well, I'm saying. Or somebody lied to me. If, they, if, that's the, if that's the case, and I feel bad for Arthur now because somebody told me that story. And what if they were lying to me and, and, and Arthur is really legitimately from the BBC? <laughs> what if, though, he's still keeping up that charade? I, Imagine I, I, for your entire career, you have to just talk in an accent that's not truly. I, I think at some point, like I watched the Randy Savage documentary, uh, the A E biography. You know, Randy had that. Oh yeah, that voice like a dig yeah. it, you know, cream of the crop. But that wasn't his real voice. He was like kind of forcing it to sound like the macho man. But yes. eventually, according to his brother, it hit a point where he just stopped talking like Randy Poffo and was forever macho man Randy Savage. Like he did not know how to switch out of that voice. Like it became his voice. Oh, isn't that crazy? Do you think that's the way with Arthur, if the story's uh, true? Well, here's the thing. Now I feel badly because I can't... If, if he's still doing it, and after that alleged story that I was told... And I and again, this was told to me right. when uh, you know sometime in that market. And so I went on the radio and said stuff, uh, but apparently that didn't stop him or anybody. So maybe I'm the idiot. You remember, I mean, I've been told stories before that were actually lies. And so true. Maybe, uh, maybe Arthur's legit. And so I, I really have no proof that he's not legit. And like I just found another article back from like 2002, and it said he was he was born in Brighton, England. 
Or Yorkshire, well, then, sorry, Yorkshire, I, England. Well, then why? I, I, you know, it's so frustrating to me that you got people to tell you things. Um, but I guess that's what humans do. So I feel badly by basically spreading that stupid lie out there. And oh, so my Irish apologies BJ to wouldn't. Arthur. Irish BJ doesn't feel bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, oh, Irish, well, no, I don't feel bad at all. I As really, you know, I'm not a fan of Arthur Crofton. I really, really hope that he's just keeping up the charade. Because how funny would that be? After oh, that would be fantastic! Years. 30, like, yeah, thirty years because I was there in the nineties. And what if like, and he's he was like, a guy? And what if he's keeping up that charade with everything? Like he's just like, you know what? I can't let this. I can't even put my guard down. So like he's maybe married to someone who has no idea that he's not really from England. His kids are maybe they would grow up and they kind of have an accent too because of dad's fake accent. You got to be thinking with the internet and everything today, though, could easily be found out. So he's got to be legit. He has to be. We need I to mean, get a hold of this. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. If, would he admit to it? No, <laughs> no, he's never going to admit to it if you if you call so, him on this. No, so this, this won't go for thirty as well years. As, this won't go as well as the time we talked to our radio buddy and asked him if he was ha- brought a hooker to a radio no. convention. You don't think this would go as well? Well, now that he's married to her, I finally believe that she wasn't. <laughs> She's in for the long con. Man. Yeah, yeah, I really thought at some point she was yeah. just going to ditch him, and and but now that they're married, I guess she's she was a legitimate human being that wasn't working. Or the lengths he's taking just to prove you wrong. Yeah. Well, well, you know right. what? I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't. You know what? I, I wouldn't doubt that either, Steve. You know, he's he's a professional. You know, he's gonna he's gonna keep it going. I feel like though, I I think Arthur must be the real deal. He must really be exactly what he says he is—a dude from England. And uh, I, <laughs> when I get off the air today, I've got a phone call to make to my other buddy in Jacksonville who told me that story, and I'm going to call him a douche. But what if he comes back and says, "No, dude, that is a true story." Well, I'm going to tell him to come on the air with us, and and he's going to provide proof. Because Arthur Crofton is going the long haul with this. 30 years he's been going with the I'm from England story. So, I mean, I, I'm going to go with Arthur. I'm on Team Arthur on this one. Oh, I think Arthur's lying. Okay. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. All I, right. I get that vibe. I could just see it in his promo picture. Yeah. yeah. He looks like a liar. Right. <laughs> is he is, is with the same Both station, Vicky? What station is he with? He's with uh, WLIE. Yes. Oh, WLIE yeah. 96.1. Liars on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, My house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. A burst pipe at 3 a.m. is a bad way to start the day. A cold shower in November isn't invigorating. So before you start freaking, call Beacon. Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical is just one call away 24 hours a day. 1-800-FREAKIN or beaconplumbing.net. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.